Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and today we are gonna make the cutest project. Now, I know we're heading into fall, so I had to use some pumpkin color thread, but this would be something even perfect for spring. So, for those of you that are getting into serging, you may or may not know about a flat lock stitch. So today's exercise is all about flat locking. So I'm gonna show you how to set up the Bernina L850, ooh, our brand new serger, on how to do that uh, on flat locking. But then we're gonna use the flat locking stitch to do many things. So first we're gonna sew this patchwork bag together using a flat lock stitch. Then we're going to move on and do serger lace where we can do this stuff that stands on its own there. And then also showing you how you can make your own little serger lace ruffle. Um, and then finally, just some converting it back to a three thread overlock stitch. And, uh, and yeah, so the secret ingredient today, in addition to the serger is the uh, Wonderfill soft lock thread. And that's right here. And this is a little bit, some of you might be familiar with a product called Woolly Nylon. Um, this is similar to Woolly Nylon, except it can be pressed because it's poly and not nylon. And um, it tends to go through this air threader machine like butter. So let's get started. All right, here's our magic machine the L850. So you've seen me do this a few times, but I just want to show you how I'm gonna thread up, especially since we're using our secret ingredient, the Wonderfill Soft Touch Thread. So let's easily thread this machine. So we're gonna start, it doesn't matter what order, I could thread the needle, I could thread the loopers, it doesn't matter. So throw all of that, those rules you have about threading your overlocker out of your head because this one is like nothing you've ever seen. Before we get started, I just wanted to point out this nice little quick reference chart that we get that comes with the machine. Um, this is where I get the information for how I'm gonna start setting up my machine. Now we are gonna be using number five stitch the three thread flat lock wide using the left needle and I'm going to set the machine up for that so that means that I need two spools of Saracore thread which you'll see one spool of my secret ingredient thread and then no thread in the right needle because we're going to remove the right needle before I get started with threading my machine with the air threading method I want to make sure that I've turned my dial to the line which represents that it's on and that's what engages the um, tube that will shoot this through with the air threading. So you wanna make sure you turn this dial. Also, you're going to take your thread and floss it through the top like so. Then we're going to take our thread and pull it about 40 centimeters. Now 40 centimeters in the, the world of inches is about 16 inches. Once you get the slack pulled of your thread that you need, you're gonna use your foot control. You're gonna press on the foot control. You're gonna hold the thread right over the opening, then push the foot control and miraculously the machine threads. And there is our little thread that came out right here. The next thread I'm using is our Wonderfill thread, the soft touch. It's going to get a little flossing as well. We're going to pull it the 40 centimeters. And then what I also like to do is cut a little clean cut on the thread so that when I hover it over this little hole here, this is going in my upper looper, by the way. So the soft secret ingredient thread goes through the upper looper. So I'm gonna hold that over the opening, press on my foot control, and voila, it threaded. So that's easy peasy. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is thread the needle. We're gonna thread the needle, but we need to start by taking the right needle out.
All right, so I'm gonna thread my needle. Now that I've removed the right needle, I'm gonna thread my left needle with this Seracore thread following the yellow path on the serger. Now don't forget, you have a setting on your threader where you can change it to go to the green side or the yellow side. We're threading the yellow side, so I wanna make sure I pull it to the left to thread the yellow side. Then we're just gonna scoop around that little metal guard, push firmly, get the thread in front of the eye of the needle through that slot and let go, and it's threaded and I can just pull it through. For the flat lock, you're going to want to adjust your yellow path or your left needle to two and your lower looper tension to six. So it's pretty easy. I did set my micro thread control to plus one and my cutting width to six. Finally, you do have some stitch length options. I put mine at 2.5 and I did the differential feed at one. All right, so we're going to use our flat lock as you know, because that's what we've set up the machine to do. But what we're gonna sew is we are going to sew a bunch of this green canvas fabric together. This is a canvas fabric from Alexander Henry. It's from their home collection or Alexander Henry for the home it's called. And of course we carry it here at Bernina of Naperville and we have it in a variety of colors. But what the ultimate goal is, is to start creating a patchwork piece like this out of the flat lock. And this is a piece I started, but we're just going to sew, cut, sew, cut, add, and keep going until we have something that measures 14 inches by 27 inches. And that's the meat and potatoes of our bag. So I'm just going to put this aside and start building some new pieces. And I'm just gonna keep stitching so that this grows. But before we get to that level, we just wanna do some flat locking of just one piece. And there's a tool that I like to use along with this. So if you don't have a set of these, uh, these come three to a set. They're from Nifty Notions. We carry them here at Bernina of Naperville. And they're pretty much elastic bodkins. Now, we were using these like crazy when we were making masks and inserting elastic into the casings on the side of the masks. But I also like to use these to flatten out my flat lock stitching. So you're gonna see me use this little dude in just a minute. So so when you're do so to do flat locking on this particular bag, we are going to put our fabric wrong sides together. So we're actually going to see the pretty side up. And this is where some of you will struggle. I struggle a little bit because sometimes you'll hear me, you know, grimacing here when I do this wrong. But we're always going to want to see both pretty sides of our fabric turned out like this. Now, you can also see that I've just folded this in half and I'm just gonna still feed this through my machine through the, under the presser foot and I'm just gonna trim. So here we go. And you know, one of the great things about this serger is that I can cut it right here on the side, just like on my sewing machine. And there's our flat lock. Now look at what this stitch looks like on the front. Kind of looks like your regular overlock stitch that you would do with three threads, right? Well, now let's turn it over. It looks a lot different. And what you're seeing on the back side of this fabric is your needle thread. So then when you do this, you want to open up your flat lock stitching and see those little train tracks there. Look at that. That is the flat lock on that side. And then look what it turns into on this side. 
All right, so here I am using my special tool. And this tool has like a fatter end and a skinnier end on it. And obviously we're gonna use the skinny end. And I'm gonna feed this under here. And hopefully you can see how that edge of the material is unfolding to make this flat lock even flatter. Look at that. Perfecto. All right, now I'm just gonna keep building this out. I've taken my build out here, and now I'm gonna add to this side. Now, don't forget, we're gonna add them wrong sides together so we get our pretty little flat lock facing us. And then I'm only going to be trimming just a little bit off. Now, I'm kind of making a little bit of a conscious effort to keep everything nice and straight. But if you like wonky lines and weird angles, go for it. There are no rules on this project. Don't forget, I'm just building out this technique. until I have a patchwork piece that is 14 inches by 27 inches. All right, I've built onto this piece a little bit and now I'm ready to sew it onto this other larger piece that I have, just kind of continuing with this process of this patchwork that's going to grow into our bag. You know, a really awesome thing about this serger is it cuts. So any little oogie messes like I have up here, I can just cut those off with the blade of my machine. But it's not necessary for me to have large pieces like this kind of hanging off, so I keep a pair of scissors handy to just trim the, those edges off. There I am, you know, kind of spreading this out. And I'm gonna work that blue tool behind here. Hello, hello, how are you? All right, so you can see here that I just kept surging and trimming and surging until I got a patchwork piece that measures 27 inches by 14 inches. Now, the um, next things that you're going to need are your handles and the little bit that goes up at the top. So what I decided to do is to make this have the least amount of actual sewing machine work, I put a band on the top of this. So you're going to need to cut a four inch piece by 28 inches to go around our bag. So that's going to be for the band and you're going to flat lock that on as well. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. Then you're also going to need a handle piece that you're gonna cut a piece four inches with the fabric, fold that in half, serge the edges on both sides, and then cut it in half and those will be your handles. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate that to you, but we're almost done with our bag because this little baby goes together quickly. <laughs> you wanna fold your bag pretty sides out, just like this. And now we're gonna stitch down the sides with a flat lock stitch. So it's hard to see our seam because everything is gonna be this flat lock piece.
And now I'm spreading my pieces out here, just like this. Now this is harder to fish my little tool down there to flatten my pieces. So really, I'm just relying on doing this with my hands. But I'm gonna go as far as I can down here to the corners. But just, you know, kind of wiggling and rubbing a little bit to get these pieces nice and flat. Same on this side. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to take my band. Now this is the four inch by 28 inch piece that we're cutting for our cuff around the top of the bag. Now I had to piece it, but who cares? I'm working on making this fun anyway. So we're gonna fold this right sides together and do a little flat lock stitch on the side of this. And then I'm opening up my seam, having it lay flat. You know, this might be an opportunity for me to use my tool to help make this lie flat, because it's easier to fish my little tool through to do this. But there's the band. And then all I wanna do is fold this in half. I'm gonna give this a little pressing on my iron and I'll be right back. All right, I pressed my little facing in and I pinned it to the inside of my bag here. Now, I put right I put wrong sides to wrong sides because our pretty side is going to flip over and you're not even going to be able to tell that this is a facing when this bag is done. So, that means we are going to press or we're going to that means we are gonna sew our piece like this. Now, what does that mean? I think it's time for me to expose our free arm with my serger. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And now I'm slipping this under the free arm. I'm gonna lift my presser foot and I'm gonna just feed this under Here's one of my starting points here on our seam. I'm just gonna encourage that to go there. And notice how I've pinned my pins just like this. Don't sew over them, just remove them. And now I'm just gonna stitchy stitch. And I'm probably gonna trim off just a little bit as I go around this. Now, as we get back to the beginning, I'm going to leave a little tail over sew a little bit, then we'll thread that through a darning needle and hide it in our work. And then here's where we started. So all I'm gonna do is cut off my edge that I started with here. And then I'm gonna feed this through a darning needle and hide my stitches. It's easy to convert your machine from the flat lock to the three thread overlock stitch. All I'm gonna do is adjust my tension to four in my yellow path and my tension to four on my red path. So now I have a balanced stitch that is suitable for making our handles and boxing off the edges of our bag.
I'm boxing in the corner. I drew my stitch line here that I'm gonna kind of line up even with my needle, but this is gonna give me a nice box on my, on my piece. We're using the three thread overcast stitch on this one. So I've taken a piece of four inch by 22 inch piece of material, folded in half and just kind of cut it, but our straps are gonna be two sided and I'm just gonna do the three thread overlock stitch down the side of this piece. And then I'm gonna make two pieces that are 22 inches by two inches wide. I'm here at my Bernina sewing machine and I am going to just be doing a little box to sew around my bag. Now, I'm going to make a little box. I'm, I'm not really going to draw anything on here. I just want to show you. I'm going to go down this edge here. I'm lining this up. I made a little mark right here. This is three inches away from the edge of my bag. And then I'm just lining where my triangle starts here with the bag, just like that. And I'm gonna put my presser foot down, starting at the edge of that surged edge, and I'm gonna make my first straight stitch. And I'm gonna stitch, pull out my needle or pin, and stop, pivot, go down. Then I'm gonna top stitch. I got my needle landing in the down position. Now I'm gonna come over and just stitch close to the edge on here. I'm right at the point. I'm gonna lift with my freehand system and turn, lower, stop, lift, and turn. And now if you wanted to be extra fancy, you could make a little box going around our bag handle. Okay, I'm down to here. So here's where I'm gonna make my X. And I'm just going to sew from one corner to the next corner. Stop. I can over sew coming along on this edge. Stop. And now go down to the other corner. Back tack and stop. And now I have my little handle on there and I just repeat that process three more times. And now for a little bonus portion. Now we made a bag and some might say making a bag is enough, but let me tell you, there's so many more things that you can do with a flat lock stitch. This was just like a little sample, but this was the start of some serger lace, kind of like a flounce I was making. And then this has aqua mesh water soluble stabilizer in it. And this is what I do to make my own little textured material for like a bow.
or something. It's, it's what's on the bag that I showed you in the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna show you how to do both of these things so that, you know, maybe this sparks some interest or, or kind of gets you thinking about making your own trims and things like that. All right, I've set the serger back up to our wide three thread flat lock stitch. And now the first thing I'm doing is I'm just gonna flat lock the edge of my material. All right, once you get your running piece done, you're gonna line your flat lock up to right just to the right side of this center little notch on the on the foot it's basically what you're trying to do is take a little bite right out of the edge of what you previously stitched and you want to you know try to keep that going as straight as you possibly can as it goes down through the machine this might be a good time to engage your motor half speed on your l850 serger all right, we're going along this second pass, just catching the loops of what we made earlier. Just carefully, slowly. Now, if you want this to wave out a lot, you want to adjust your differential feed. And I would do it to 0.7. Adjusting the differential feed to 0.7 will allow this to give you a wave effect. Now, as I go down here again, I'm just catching those loops, but now I have the back set of my feed dogs moving faster then the front set, which means it's gonna stretch out my serger lace a little bit so that I get a ruffle. And I'm kind of trimming now a little bit as I go along just so I don't have all of these threads in my way. See, you can see how this is okay. So we have done, we've done four rows now. Let's go ahead and do our fifth. And if you need, kind of lift up your foot to get this started. But remember, we just want to get the loops. And go as slowly as you need to make this pretty. And don't forget about being able to put your needle down and rearranging a little bit as you do stuff. I just like to wiggle when we get to this stage a little bit. And look. We have something that would make a really cute trim. So that's how to make serger lace. Now there's another thing that we're going to do that you're gonna love, and this is kind of like freestanding lace only done on the serger. 
All right, I'm working here with just some scrap leftover water soluble stabilizer from another project that I was doing. Um, this is what we're gonna use for the base to make this. Uh, this is what it's gonna look like before it gets dissolved. And the flower on our bag is what it looks like after we've given it a bath. Now, we, when we did this, we worked in a fairly narrow strip and I could continue building onto this, but in this application, I'm using something that's more like a, like a crocheted ribbon is what I'm really going for with this look, but I could just keep building and making this wider and wider. But let me just show you how you get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna flat lock the edge of this water soluble stabilizer. Don't forget, I have my machine on half speed. Okay, now I'm gonna cut. Now I'm coming back and I'm folding this over just so, oops. I'm folding this over lining this up just like we did our other pieces. And now you see that I'm cutting off some of this water soluble stabilizer. That's okay. I'm gonna line it up again in a minute. I'm gonna line it up under here and go again. Now, when I made the ribbon for my little flowers, I did this six times. And now another thing I want to remind you of when you do this and you do give it a bath, it gets longer. Because <laughs> this is really just a chain of a bunch of thread. Okay, so that's three rows. Oops. Got a wider piece of stabilizer here. Yeah, so for those of you that have an embroidery machine that are looking to do something with your freestanding lace scraps, well, you can make some serger lace. Oops, I'm running out of stabilizer. That's okay. I got back on the road here, we're fine. I guess I'm gonna have to make a row without any stabilizer under there. Anyway, you can see, so that was four rows. And really the goal is to make two more. I could go over here on the other side. Cause once this is all laced together, you can't really tell. You just have to make sure that you're always catching the previous stitching. So let's have one last look at this. Okay, you get the stuff out of the way here. We're going to lift the press your foot and get started 
right here. We're lining up the edge kind of right to that little notch. See how there's a notch, 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 and then a notch over here? We're going to line up right here because that gets us just so that our needle takes a bite. Now let's see what the finished result looks like. All right, did you enjoy our video on making this super cute bag? And look, look, there's our serger lace on our flower. I think that's pretty spectacular and I hope you give something like this a try. So if you wanna see more videos like this one, don't forget you can tune into our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy, it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And you can subscribe, like and comment. And you know, who doesn't like to be liked and who doesn't like to hear what you have to say to us about our videos or any techniques. Um, another thing that you could do is you can click the little bell and then you get an alert every time we upload a video like this one. But guess what? Sometimes we do them late. So bloop, bloop, here it comes. <laughs> anyway, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed making this bag for you and hoping that we've inspired some creativity. But in the meantime, I want you to have some happy surging. Get that overlocker out. And if you don't have one, stop by and see the new Bernina L850. Thank you.